Hi everybody, it's Heather Pastor, Artist Ambassador for the Atlantic Center for the Arts. I'm back here with another um, Summer Family Series uh, class where we're going to be using um, a famous artist from history who uh, was inspired by music. And today's uh, artist du jour is this gentleman right here, Pete Mondrian. And he created a piece called um, Broadway Boogie Woogie. And that is this piece here. And it will be our inspiration piece for the uh, creative printmaking that we're going to be doing today. So um, I'm thinking I may have jumped online a, um, maybe a minute early, but again, it's Heather Pastor, the um, your Atlantic Center for the Arts ambassador, arts ambassador, and we're going to be doing some printmaking today. So. I'm super excited about this project. Um, again, it's inspired by Pete Mondrian's piece called Broadway Boogie Woogie. And um, I'm coming to you live here from my home studio in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. And I'm, um, this is, I think, the second of three of these summer family series uh, classes that we're going to be doing, that I'm going to be doing. Um, we're trying to find some projects that are fun for both adults and children. Uh, maybe you can do something like this as a family or, um, you know, hopefully, like I said, you can get a little more sophisticated with what I show you today, but if you want to keep it simple and just have fun with the process, it's a good way to keep out of the summer Florida heat, which is taken over. I am going to go ahead and get started and hopefully we have a few of you uh, joining us today. Uh, I'm going to go over really briefly the, um, the list of supplies. Now I'm going to do two different uh, methods because not everybody has access to acrylic paints or tempera paints. So there's one method that we're going to use that um, if you do have paints, I prefer it. I think you get a little bit better print or pull from the um, plate you're going to create. Um, the other one is going to be with uh, non-permanent markers. So let me go over, let's go over the, um, the marker version first. So you'll need some kind of a non-permanent marker. And I slid the camera back a little bit today so that you could see the surface I'm working on. I hope that, um, I hope that everything is still visible and clear to you out there in uh, Facebook Live world. And thanks for joining me today. Also want to remind you, if you haven't already, to please take the, um, there's a pre-workshop survey that they're asking that everybody takes. So if you haven't taken it already and you have a couple seconds, you can pop over to the link that is on the uh, event uh, discussion, I believe, or it's actually in the description. So you can check that out and take that pre-survey because there's also a post-survey. So we'd love to get your, um, your feedback on how these are working for you and how you like them. So, okay, so markers, you're gonna need non-permanent markers. So, and make sure they're, they're very well inked, that they have enough um, uh, color in them. I tried to do this with some that were a little iffy and they didn't, it, the prints didn't come out quite as well. So you'll want markers. You're going to need for both of them, you're gonna need some plain white paper, just regular copy paper, the paper you would print on um, in your printer at home, just a thin, regular sheet of paper. You're also going to need um, a dish of water. It doesn't matter what kind of you know, dish, but you're gonna also need a sponge. So just regular household sponge, kitchen sponge, and um, some kind of a you know, container for water. I like these shallow ones. I get Chinese food in them, and they seem to work pretty well for all kinds of stuff. So these are good. Um, so water, sponge, markers, plain old paper, 
and scissors. And for both of them, and I'll go over this here in a minute, but for both of them, you're gonna need some kind of cardboard. So you can do like a regular corrugated cardboard. That one has a little bit uh, more like a thickness to it. This one's fine, um, like regular packaging. So like if you bought anything from Amazon in the last few weeks uh, and you managed to keep, or a shoe box, I mean, I'm talking any, pretty much any kind of cardboard. If it's a, if it's a decent thickness and it'll stand up. Uh, I know all of you have been snacking out there, so there have got to be some snack boxes. These are some of my favorites. Um, these are fine too, and I will just show you how to, if you haven't ever, um, well, I think I'm going to show you how to disassemble a box that, you know, could be even a pasta box. Some of them have like a little uh, transparent window in them, but the other side. So anything that's like a full cardboard, you can just break out the back or the bottom of it. Usually there's some adhesive that's not too hard to uh, break through. Usually you can just peel and then there's usually one side with a seam that's been glued. This one happens to be on this side. So and you can open it up and it makes a great uh great surface really for all kinds of different artwork i use a lot of uh recycled materials and specifically cardboard and a ton of projects so um these are these are just great and they're very usable so we'll end up cutting this in in a few minutes but grab some cardboard uh you'll need preferably glue all uh elmer's glue all or some kind of a um a uh, liquid glue liquid white glue this is one of my favorites the school glue doesn't have quite the same sticking power so if you have glue all that's my preference but if you don't other stuff will work you might just have to wait a little longer for it to set up so um, you'll need glue cardboard and a good pair of scissors you'll need those and the white paper for both of the versions of this project um, and I had also put on there um, aluminum foil as a an optional um, supply because you don't necessarily have to have it but I'll explain to you uh, if you do have it I'll explain to you in a minute why it would be beneficial so if you've got it great so for both versions we're gonna need aluminum foil possibly definitely white paper cardboard scissors liquid glue and I think that's it yes so if you're doing the marker version you're gonna need obviously your markers and um, some kind of a dish with a sponge if you're doing the acrylic paint version you're going to need acrylic paint um, or a tempera paint might work I didn't experiment with the tempera paint but um, but the acrylic is good and if you have some paint brushes some smaller paint brushes uh, will work better if you don't have paint brushes I just use my finger for mine so um, might be more fun for the kids but of course it does it's a little more messy so you guys can do with that as you please because we're using paint I would recommend covering your tabletop with something um, if you're working on a surface that you don't want to possibly ruin because acrylic paint uh, will it will stain clothing if you don't get it out fast enough, um, carpeting, things like that. It can, uh, it, in possibly furniture. So like if you have anything that's covered that you are um, sitting on, I'm gonna make sure that that's uh, staying far away from acrylic paint. And you'll probably need some paper towel uh, with either one of these, uh, either one of these two versions, paper towel would be nice to have handy. Okay. So I said I would do the marker version first. And here's what we're, we're inspired by um, Broadway Boogie Woogie, which is again, I showed everybody a minute ago, but in case you missed it, I know I had a few people that joined since I showed this. Broadway Boogie Woogie is a piece by Pete Mondrian. He is a um, Dutch painter from like the late 1800s, early 1900s. He actually was inspired by um, um, a lot of European artists came over to the United States when uh, World War II broke out in the early 40s. And uh, Boogie Woogie 
was pretty popular in like the late 1920s. It was actually um, had its origins as far back, they think, maybe as 1870 um, in the African American communities. And it's a piano heavy uh, blues, which I did a, um, a lot of listening to Boogie Woogie while I was prepping for this uh, project and I really started to kind of dig it. Like if you haven't listened to Boogie Woogie, it's, it's pretty contagious. It's really fun. So hopefully if you haven't already, you should check out the, the links that I put on the discussion for this event on the Atlantic Center for the Arts Facebook page. Um, I put a couple of different pieces that uh, I think are just so much fun. And if you haven't listened to them, you should. I'm going to try to play some when we get going on our project here. I'm going to try to play you some in case you haven't had a chance uh, to listen to it. But it's um, it was one of the versions that they kind of used more for dancing. So it's a lot. It's a really fun, quick paced, um, like I said, piano heavy. So if you like piano like I do, I'm not a huge, I don't know a lot about music, but I love that um, and I've been inspired by music myself, but a lot of the, when you go back and look, a lot of artists from uh, history have definitely been inspired by music. So, and, and um, Mondrian was no different. He, when he got here, came over here to New York City, he was inspired by the city and by Boogie Woogie. And that is, this is the piece that he created, which was different than a lot of the pieces that he created um, in his past uh, that he had painted. So he painted his. We're gonna do, like I said, we're kind of doing a little different version today um, because we're gonna be doing some printmaking. So we're doing, we're creating a little uh, print plate to do some collagraph, which usually a collagraph is kind of like, um, like an, uh, what do I wanna call it? Uh, like a collage. So you could use all kinds of different things that have texture um, to create a collagraph plate. We're just gonna be using cardboard. Um, and if you haven't already, you wanna prep your cardboard just simply by cutting yourself. You can make this as big or as small as you want. I did a bigger one, I'll show you. And then I also just kinda started a little mini one today. So pick a size that you want to be the background or the plate size. So like the one that I just started is a little smaller. You can tell, um, I did a bunch of different sizes. So oops, this one's got some light on it. So this one's one that I've already covered in aluminum foil, but pick a size, any size does not matter. Uh, it's kind of based on how much cardboard you have because you're not, whatever piece of cardboard you have, you want to make sure you leave yourself enough pieces of cardboard to create the design on this plate. So this could be one size, but make sure you have enough extra to be able to cut some additional pieces that we're gonna glue on, okay? All right, so I just cut, here's the back of my Cheez-It box. Um, and you could use cereal boxes, whatever. Anyway, this is the size that I'll start on today. And I'm gonna kinda like flip out, like kind of like they do on the cooking shows, right? Where they start a little part of it and then they put it aside and they've got something that's already um, at a different um, a different stage. That's kind of what I'm gonna do with you guys today. So we've got our plate here and if you're doing the acrylic plate, or excuse me, the acrylic paint version, you're gonna wanna also leave yourself a, a few little pieces maybe to create, um, some little kind of like stamps so very primitive stamps it's literally a piece of cardboard that I folded in half and because Mondrian used um, is very geometric his his pieces are very geometric very straight lined and I thought it's an easy way to kind of get you um, like kind of broken into this idea because I'll show you some other things that I did um, some other plates I created um, using a different shape, but you can you could do circles. You can do triangles You could create whatever design you want um, I've seen some really neat very very sophisticated ornate pieces that um, people have done with again very very basic uh, supplies that you can pick out of your recycle bin so uh, Okay, 
So there are more professional supplies for this kind of project, just to let you know. But, um, but these, they work for now. So. so if you're doing acrylic paint, leave yourself a few pieces to make these out of, and I'll show you why uh, a little bit later. And then leave yourself enough to cut into, like I like starting with some like different size uh, thicknesses, like some different widths and lengths of just a plain old strip of cardboard. So, and this is why I love this. It's so easy, like you really, it's fun. It's easy, it's fun, and um, you can kind of create some really interesting things. So here's our plate. I'm taking a strip, another strip of cardboard and I'm going to cut, like I said, some different size pieces. I'm going to try to do this so that you can see. Don't, there's no rhyme or reason. They don't have to be perfectly straight. You know, don't worry too much about it. Just have fun cutting some little pieces of cardboard. Oh, maybe I'll throw on some boogie woogie while we're doing this. See if I can make this work. All right, this guy is, um, I'm gonna play Henry Herbert. He happened to be one of my favorites when I was doing my research. And it's um, Boogie Woogie Piano. So let's see if I can make this happen. It would have made a good intro. I should have put it on as an intro. Can you hear it? Hopefully. If anyone's out there and you can tell me if you can hear it or not, I'll probably turn it back down so I don't have to shout at you. But it's also hard for me to read as far away as this I, um, iPad is. It's a little tough for me to read the comments. So I'm not only am I nearsighted, but I'm also now farsighted. So. I'm going to leave a few of these a little bit longer, maybe even not quite the length of the box because we want to leave ourselves a little bit of a I don't know you could go off off the edge of your plate and remember if you cut a longer strip you can always cut it into shorter strips based on the space you're gonna try to cover Okay, so I'm gonna kind of start this one with you and then I'm gonna to move to one that is pretty much almost done so that we can, again, see things in stages. But I got my plate and I'm gonna cut, this one's about the same size, so I'm just gonna cut a little bit off the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. Hopefully you can hear it. Cool, right I like it but you can kind of I don't know about you but when I listen to it and then I look at this piece I can kind of see you know these I think we're supposed to um, represent intersections in the city and um, different blocks and he used primarily primary colors so your red and your blue and yellow but there's also which you can't really tell in this version um, printed off of my copy or, or print it off my computer um, there's also like shades of gray uh, he, he used a lot of black in most of his other work but this one had some gray so you could actually even um, paint you know this piece of we're gonna print onto this white paper you could paint this before you um, pulled your your print from the calligraph plate um, that's also an idea. So you could paint some stripes or whatever, you know, whatever you wanted on, uh, on the paper first and then lay, lay it down and I'll show you here what we're going to do, but okay. So I'm going to take this and this is part that you might not be able to see very clearly. I'm going to use my, um, my white glue and doesn't really matter which side. I mean, I always leave the, um, the cardboard, the brown side of it up so that I can kind of, I don't know, it's less distracting to me for this kind of a thing. But we're gonna put, we're gonna put the glue 
I think it was just working. Here we go. And I put the glue on one side or the other, and we're just going to lay these on. Now, sometimes I like to, sometimes I like to lay these out before I start gluing things down. And I'm going to try to get the, here it is over here by my left hand. Um, so I just glued it on there and you, you can create whatever pattern you want. I tend to be very type A, so I keep everything pretty straight and narrow, especially again, trying to use, um, this, this particular piece as our inspiration. It's very, again, pretty, you know, straight lines, little cubes, things like that. So just to give you an idea, hopefully you can see this one is one that I started. So you're just gonna lay them in, and if you want, I'm, I tend to be a little non-committal with what I do um, artistically. So I like to just place them all on there and then go back and then put the glue on the back, and that way you know, you can, you can move stuff around instead of being st stuck with it being in a particular place and then getting a little further down the line and going, oh, I don't know if I really like that. So lay them out or if you're just going to go for the gusto then you can um, go ahead and glue them down as you go along. So I'm going to finish this little one just to show you what it's going to look like. And you want to use, you want to leave a little bit of space. I don't know if you noticed, but leave yourself a little bit. We're kind of creating, um, if you've ever used uh, stamps, you know how like there's a raised part and then there's the, um, the part that's been kind of carved out. Of the stamp oop, <laughs> out of the stamp um, we're creating the same it's the same idea we're trying to create a raised surface so that when we put paint on it or we put the markers on it um, the, and the paper comes down on it it's going to I feel like you're so far away um, <laughs> so that when you go to pull the print it's only going to print what's on these littler pieces and then our plate the backing is or the background is going to remain white if your paper is white or it's going to be colored if you decide that you want to paint you know the, the white copy paper so just put a few more now you'll probably not want to go vertical with this right away like i just did because it these will slide until the glue sets up and you want to make sure everything's got plenty of glue on it. Um, if it starts to kind of ooze out the edges or un from underneath, you can always take, um, I just take my finger, but if you're not into using, you know, getting dirty like that, um, you can also use like a, a damp paper towel or just a paper towel and create whatever pattern you like. And again, you don't have to make yours inspired by um, Mondrian's piece, but that's what I'm gonna do today. And I'll, again, I'll show you. Um, if you like this and what it what happens when you print from it, you can create all kinds of really cool, um, all kinds of really cool stuff. It could be um, pattern. I think tends to look really nice. And I think you get a little bit better if you get try to get too detailed. Sometimes it the results aren't as nice or as I don't know. To each his own. I like the basic, the simple pattern kind of stuff. But yeah, it's not. So I just tried to stick this down, and I didn't really have enough space for it. So I'm gonna take it out here. Maybe do a smaller piece. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna call this one finished for right now. Um, and again, just once you get the pieces in place, go ahead and just set it aside for a minute and let it, let the glue set up. Cause we wanna make sure it's nice and dry before we start um, trying to make prints with it. Otherwise <laughs> the cardboard might pop off onto your print so the little piece of cardboard so just make sure that when you set it aside it's got enough time to set um set up so it'll stick okay oh 
oh, there's another really cool um, little video. It's only like a minute long or something, and it's on um, MoMA, Museum of Modern Art in New York. Um, did this really cool, I found it the other day on YouTube. Uh, he's a musician who actually looked at Mondrian's piece and was trying to pick out the, like, he, basically his theory was that like this, these lines, these smaller lines were the right or the left hand, because when they're playing the piano for the boogie woogie, um, and I don't know which one, which one was which, but anyway, and then these were different chords or something he seemed to think, some of the larger uh, squares and rectangles, which I thought was really fascinating. Um, anyway it, it was it's a really cool little video again that's also i posted that on the discussion for this event on the atlantic center for the arts facebook page and you can look at the um summer family series it's a uh, creative printmaking class so that's what this one is on the um on the events page so i'm going to set aside some of these little pieces of cardboard because i've made my plate and if you don't have um, if you don't have the aluminum foil, again, it's it's optional. What it will allow you to do is just to give you a for instance. Um, when I did this sample one, and I did it with the thicker cardboard, um, I put the aluminum foil on it. I could have after I pulled this print with these colors, I could have taken a paper towel and I could have wiped this down, and I could have put another set of colors so you can reuse these more easily if you use the aluminum foil um again you don't have to because you can print straight from the actual cardboard what else did i want to show you about that um oh and if you're doing the markers you definitely want to use and you must use the aluminum foil yeah you really have to because, and this is what I'm going to do on this one, I'm going to pretend that this is all dry, this little one. I'm going to try to do an acrylic print off of this little one. Um, but this one is the one I'm going to use. This is the one I had already done previously. Um, they kind of remind me of like a Hershey's chocolate bar. I'm kind of a junk food junkie. so. A lot of things end up looking like uh, some kind of delicious dessert or <laughs> some kind of snack. Uh, this reminded me a little bit of the Hershey's chocolate bar and um, you know how it's wrapped in that silver wrapper and mm, so delicious. Anyway, so you'll want to just take a little piece. I'm going to do it. I'll show you how to do it on this one, but just a piece of aluminum foil. And I'm going to place it over top of my cardboard plate. Now, it's a little tricky, and I will tell you, like, you don't, the cheaper aluminum foil, because when I've done this with the lesser expensive aluminum foil, sometimes it tears. And it's not the end of the world, but the more that you can define all of these little pieces and parts, with like, I like to use maybe like the end, uh, the edge of my thumb, like not my nail necessarily, even though I don't have much of them. Um, you probably want to be careful because you don't want it to tear. But I would kind of like start at one end, and I don't know if you can see what I'm doing or not. I kind of wish I could pop something above my head so you could see this more clearly. But and if I move it too much, I'm gonna lose my. But I'm just gonna start kind of pressing, and then go back in. So you can start to see the forms pop through. Let me take this little piece off. It's kind of distracting. Okay. Okay, so you can start pressing it and then use your, your finger or the pad of your finger or your thumb to kind of get in, in between some of these spaces. And I can't see, well, it's, facing you what I'm doing so but you get the idea so we're gonna press this on here and then I like to take the aluminum foil and leave yourself enough of like some kind of edge so you can wrap it around the, the back um, I've seen where people have also taped these so you could go to that you could go 
do that as well. So it's not there yet, but it's going to look like this when I'm done. If I can get beyond my lights to show you, but so that's where this is going. It's just taking me a little bit to get there. So be patient with it because you don't, again, you don't want it to tear. And we'll finish that. So like I said, if you have aluminum foil, great. Um, if you're doing the marker one, you definitely want to have the aluminum foil on there. Okay. Okay. I'm going to grab my samples. these didn't come out quite as um, and I thought for the videos purpose it might be a little bit more challenging to see these again some of my markers weren't they didn't have enough ink in them so some of these weren't they didn't come out as um, as pretty as I wanted to be honest these started to come out a little bit better to give you an idea, like this is where we're gonna go. This is the marker version. So it's a little bit more like watercolory, if you will. Uh, I think that was probably my best one. Um, the paper gets a little bit crinkled because it's just plain old copy paper and we're gonna have to put a little bit of water on it to activate the markers and get a print. So again, my preferred method is the acrylic paint or maybe a temper paint. But if you don't have access to those, I wanted to give you another option. Okay, so I'm gonna try to find a couple of markers that are, what did I do with them? Yeah, there. That have enough juice in them so that this will come out well. And we're gonna actually just start um, coloring on the aluminum foil. So, and we're gonna color only on the raised parts that you created for your plate. So, or, you know, the part, the pieces that you glued down. So make sure that everything's glued down and it's not, you know, when you pick it up and you go like this, make sure that the pieces aren't sliding down with, you know, the liquid glue. Um, and I'm just gonna start coloring this. I'll probably just color a portion of it because just for time constraints. So did you all use some kind of a um, snack box? Because if you did, I wanna know what kind of snacks you like. I wanna know what cereal you had to chow through to be able to create your um, print plate today. <laughs> cereal or that delicious box of Cheez-Its like I did. I like those um, extra toasty ones. If you haven't tried them and you like Cheez-Its, they are awesome. Because they're kind of like I always like the burned, more burned ones anyway, that are in the box. So this is like a whole box of burned ones, or almost burned, you know, they're not burned, but you get the idea, a little crispier. Um, and when you go to color this, you wanna kinda think about color placement. So um, when it comes to composition, and I always bring this up, no matter what class I'm teaching, the, the name of the game usually is to try to get somebody's eye to move around the entire piece. So if you place a little bit of red here and a little bit of red here and some here and some down here, you know, there's a kind of a line for your eye to travel. And it and doesn't, when I say a line, it doesn't have to be a specific, you know, straight line, but just um, a path. Let's call it a path, not a line. It gives your eye a path to travel and allows you to take in the whole composition. So when you're um, coloring or painting anything, you wanna kinda keep that in mind. Um, so I like to put a little bit of, this purple seems to be pretty inked up here, so. And just try to stay on the, now these are not gonna be like really crisp, clean lines, especially with the, um, the marker method, which sometimes kind of makes my type a brain makes it hurt a little bit, but <laughs> I know some of you have a looser artistic style. 
because I think if I'm reading that right, Sherry's on um, watching and she has a beautiful watercolor style that's much more fluid. So you might like this marker technique, Sherry. Um, okay. So I'm just gonna color a few of these. See if I can find another one that's see how I'm doing on time. Yeah, yeah, I gotta speed it up a little bit. Yep, okay, so my red and my purple seem to be looking good. One of my favorite popsicle flavors and one of my least favorite popsicle flavors. So the red, the cherry popsicle, that's again, you see how I go straight to food. Uh, when I'm making art, I don't know, I must be hungry all the time because I started thinking about popsicles when I started coloring this. So pick your, pa your favorite popsicle color. <laughs> And you can also, um, like for this technique, you could um, you could color in in between. So like I told you, like with the acrylic paint technique, you could paint the paper first or use a colored paper. Um, this one, you could actually, like on some of my favorite prints from here, I actually colored in between the lines as well you can't hardly tell because it's yellow but I was kind of experimenting but and you can tell I had the basic <laughs> Crayola pack because those are the colors I had on those but those seem to be working better so anyway um, so you can color in between as well so like in between all my purple and my red I could do that so I'm just gonna do a quick pull on this one so that you can um, see how that kind of looks and see the technique or excuse me see the process because I want to make sure I have plenty of time to show you also the acrylic so for the marker version which is what I just did here a little portion of it I didn't finish coloring it all but you want to color the whole thing and then with that water my Chinese food container I'm just gonna put my little kitchen sponge in here let it absorb some water and I want to squeeze out majority of it this sometimes can be a little tricky trying to figure out the, uh, the amount of water that you should use So you might have to do it a couple of times, but then you're just going to take the sponge. It's it's pretty moist It's not soaked I'm gonna think there goes some water so And then I'm just gonna use it um, You don't want it to be completely transparent when you put the water on the paper or else it'll probably tear or um but just gently wetting down, I'm gonna wet down the paper with the sponge. And this is also why like, you could if you have like a, a, a thicker paper or like a watercolor paper or something, you could try it with that too. Now while it's still damp, like you can see, it's almost like paper towel consistency or like a thick paper towel. And I've got my plate and I'm gonna lay my paper on top of, I'm trying to get this a little closer. I don't know if you can see it though. I'm gonna lay my paper on top of here and I'm gonna press gently. Cause again, we don't want it to, we don't want it to tear. But this technique, you can actually kind of see it come through. You can see the marker kind of come through. And you wanna make sure that your coloration on the plate is pretty you want to make sure you color it completely, which to get a good print. Okay, hopefully I put enough water on here, but I can see a couple spots I missed when I was pulling it. So there's my little print that I did with just the half of this. So. When you do the full print, obviously you'll lay it in. And now this is very, it's pretty wet. So you wanna make sure that you lift it carefully, straight up, and then you set it aside. So like this, again, um, and then these would be kind of fun too. Like you could take these pieces that you print and you could cut them out and you could create a whole nother um, piece of artwork from all of the different prints that you, that you pull you know, pick your favorites and create kind of a compilation. 
So this is the marker technique. So that one actually came out pretty good, I gotta say. And again, now you can see where I didn't pull all, like I didn't, I didn't pull all the color on the red up here, oops, over here. Um, so this side over here, most of the marker has transferred to the paper, but you could take the sponge, like I'll do the sponge because I'm not going to use it again. Don't use, don't use the sponge if you're going to try to, um, you know, use it for another piece of paper, like to dampen another piece of paper. But you could use a wet paper towel or the sponge and you can just clean this off and reuse you can reuse this plate. So maybe I don't want to do purple and red next time. Maybe I want to do blue and green. I don't know, whatever. So it comes clean. So that's kind of the bonus in using the acrylic, or excuse me, the aluminum foil, is that you can reuse it like that. So I'm going to set this aside to dry. And I'll show you the acrylic paint technique. So for that one, again, you can just use your finger which is what I'm gonna probably do. I'll show you the brush just because I should. But it's way more fun using your finger. Um, and I'm just gonna reuse, well, let's see if I can get this one to a point where I use it. I'll just pull like a little mini print from this one. Mm. Just... Okay, so the little plate that I started, you want to make sure for the acrylic paint or temper paint that you have um, you have some paper towel nearby. And I'm gonna use that dish of water to like kind of clean my fingers off because when you move from one color to the next if you do use your fingers I did actually just use more than one finger instead of cleaning my fingers <laughs> um, you could do that or you can clean your fingers in between um, I don't know you do it however you want to do it but um, you might want to have paper towel on hand just in case either way and You can also, um, if, if you know that there was somebody who was interested in this workshop today but couldn't jump on at one o'clock uh, Eastern time, you could always, this will live, this video will live on the Atlantic Center for the Arts page. So you can always forward that link to your friends or if you know somebody's got, you know, the kids are home for the summer and they're looking for a fun, easy project to do with them, you can send this to them to do. I will also, if anybody's out there that has been involved in any of my classes, I'll email this uh, link to this video to everyone afterward, because I know that happens. One o'clock on a Saturday, sometimes it's a little tough time. Sometimes uh, people get going on things and don't realize the time, so. Okay, I'm gonna try to use this to create my little print. Okay. Now, oh, I forgot to tell you. If you're going to use acrylic paint or temper paint, you want to put it on something. There's a whole host of different things. I mean, you could literally use just another piece of paper. Some of the paint will absorb into the paper, just like it would on this paper plate, but this paper plate's a little bit thicker. So I'm going to put a little bit of paint on a paper plate. I like them because they're disposable um, and biodegradable. Uh, but you can also reuse, you know, plastic plates or if you have a palette, use a palette. Some of these songs I think are recorded at a different volume level. So I'm going to pour just a little bit of paint. You don't need a whole lot. Now, if you were doing this with professional supplies, you would probably actually use some kind of a printmaking ink. There is a specific ink that you can use to do this. We're doing um, more of a family-based, fun, uh, 
use some items from home kind of uh, theme here, but there, like I said, there are professional. Um, and if you are doing something that is uh, like all one color, you could use a brayer. It's like a little mini uh, paint roller without the sponge on it. Um, some of you might be familiar with those. Anyway, uh, you could apply the ink with a brayer and do it that way too. I don't know how that would work with the aluminum foil. I suppose it would probably be similar. I did not try it for this project. So I'm gonna use my finger and then I'll also use the brush. You don't need a lot on your finger. And I'm gonna literally kind of paint the raised areas on my plate. And you want enough where there's, you know, you don't want to paint the aluminum foil. I mean, it actually makes a really pretty um, piece on its own, like with the aluminum foil. But if, for what we're doing with the print, we want enough on there where there's going to be enough for it to um, pull or um, transfer to the paper. So make sure you put enough on there that, and I wish, I'm sorry that, I'll try to get this a little closer when I get more done. Just remember that whatever's on here, like I'm kind of cleaning up some of the edges a little bit as I go. And I'm trying to pick some different. So there's a good bit of paint and you want to work pretty quickly, quickly with the acrylic because it dries quickly. So if you're going to use the acrylic and the temper probably too is going to dry even faster if you've got temper that you're trying to use with the kids. Um, so I would just, because we want to make sure it's, it's wet still when we go to print with it. All right. I might just do, I don't know, we'll see here. I like using three colors, um, kind of a design thing, using odd numbers, but you can use as many as you want. And Mondrian kind of stuck to a three color uh, color palette with his primaries, so that's the only reason I did that. But really, you could do whatever you want. I'm not really big into rules in art. I mean, they're there. But I guess Picasso said they're there to learn so that you can break them. Because really, that's where the most fun art, I think, is created. <clears throat> created is when you're Busting through the rules. And I didn't clean my finger off, so now I got paint everywhere. So. Um, and I didn't particularly, uh, I thought my. When I pulled my print off of. Uh, this plate I thought it needed some more whoops some more like if you look at this plate when I printed from it that I added a bunch to it so you can also go back and that's what these were for you can go back and cut um, some cardboard and use it as stamps and kind of fill in some of the areas if you you know think it needs a little something Obviously, that's not part of the printmaking process, but <clears throat> I penned. You know, you kind of want to fill your space. All right, now I'm going back to the fingers because I don't have another paintbrush right here handy. And I can already see that my paint is starting to dry, so I got to work a little faster here. Um, the the blessing and the curse of using multiple colors and a lot of little pieces is that it may you may have to work faster than I'm fa uh, faster than I'm working or re-ink a little bit okay on the pieces that you may have painted uh, first See, and I like see things I want to go back and do, so I'm going to go back in here with the paintbrush. Of course, you have probably a little bit more control with the paintbrush, but it's not nearly as fun. Mm. Let's see which one I did. Ooh. Let's see if it won't show. 
All right, one more. I think I got most of the pieces on mine. So here's my plate. I've put a good bit of paint on it and I'm hoping that it's, eh, I'm gonna just go over this, the top ones I did uh, with another little layer. Now ordinarily, you should be able to um, reuse this because of the aluminum foil, even with the acrylic, but you have to work pretty quick. Um, and the acrylic is water-based, so there's a possibility. Otherwise, you could um, just come back through it with, like once it dries, I could have put some other colored paints on there. I'm just re-painting a few of these, actually most of them, so that I make sure that I get a good print. I'm on camera for this one. I'm gonna make it look good. So he's a little nerve-wracking. Okay, and I need paper towel to clean my fingers off so that I can pop this paper on top. And I usually leave this flat and then put my paper on top of it instead of trying to do it the other way around. Okay, so I'm gonna lay that in carefully. Get one chance to drop it down and then you're gonna smooth it out with your fingers. Whereas a stamp, you usually go in from the top down. All right, and you don't want it to wiggle around too much because your print won't be as clean. I'm gonna pull it this way just in case. It's pulling off a Band-Aid slowly. So that came out okay. Um, I'd like a little cleaner print and I think I could have accomplished that. And sometimes it takes a couple to just kind of get the, the good, like the balance between, um, you know, how much paint to use, how to pull it up. I mean, it's a little bit of a, of a tricky little procedure, but once you kind of, once you do it a few times, you usually um, kind of get a knack for it. And, and the, again, the great thing about, and the frustrating thing sometimes for me with printmaking is that you don't always have a lot of control with how it comes out. So, um, you know, like I would have put a little bit more paint on certain areas, but it still looks pretty cool. And I even thought it's a totally different thing, but you could go back in here and use um, like a permanent marker and like draw in some things, maybe draw in. I really like typ typography and artwork. So you could use, um, you know, some... I don't know, some verbiage, maybe a, a cool quote or some special words. You could kind of write those in between. I don't know. I thought about dabbling, doing something like that. And again, I've got, um, some of you are doing the expressive journaling with, um, the expressive art journaling with Laura Baum. You could take something like this and incorporate it into your journal, your art journal. So think about that too. Um, okay, so here's the acrylic version. It's my little mini. And then um, we did our marker version. And I only have a few more minutes, but if you wanted to build on this print, you could paint some on here, make a little, your own little stamp. And then I just place it, press it again, like very carefully and then pull it up. And I, that's why this is bent like this. So it gives you a little handle to pull it up with. So if you get that idea. So there's paint on one side and then it's, um, let me get it right. There's paint on one side and then this is just like kind of acts as a little handle so you can pull it up and press it down a little bit more easily. So that's always fun, even just to create these and make some fun stamps. Um, and they can be very plain. I'm hoping that you will uh, be so kind as to post onto the event and show me what you did because that's always the fun fun part for me when I'm in a classroom is that I can see what everybody's creating as it's happening, which is um, kind of the bummer in doing the videos is that I you're not here so I can't see unless you're you're willing to share 
and um, like I said, like do a few of them. Like this is just one quick little pull, one quick little print, but you can like this again, because I did a little mini, I could put several of them on a page or I could even cut this and just use part of it to fill up the page. Um, thinking about your composition and your color selection. And if you're just getting started, again, like three colors is usually just kind of a nice place to begin. Oh, but I did want to show you one more thing. Just to give you some ideas on where to go with this afterward, I wanted to create like a rainbow kind of a um, collagraph with my cardboard. So I did a couple of them. So you can do um, whatever shape you want to do. Like these were just simple um, Mondrian inspired uh, rectangles, squares, uh, but pick all, you know, you could do concentric circles. I like these little rainbows. I haven't printed with them yet. But again, if you don't have the aluminum foil, go ahead and put the paint, you can apply the paint right on your um, cardboard. And then again, just, you can decide. I mean, some people prefer to do it this way. I like putting the paper on top. Um, and, and then I have a little more control as to the trans, uh, I feel like I have more control um, transferring the color so I can kind of see it being absorbed into the paper. When you use a really thin paper like this, that is, it's easier to see. If you get a thicker paper, which is, is nice, if you're gonna do something um, that you want to kind of stand the test of time, then um, you might have to do it the other way. But, so again, it's Heather Pastor, Artist Ambassador for the Atlantic Center for the Arts. Super excited that you are here today with me to do some creative printmaking. And if you would be so kind as to um, post to the, um, the page, or you can also email me if you're not sure that you wanna um, show the whole world. But if you wouldn't mind showing me, I would love to see what you've done. Uh, my email is hp at heatherpastor.com. And I am looking forward to seeing you again next month on August 8th, I believe it is. August 8th? Oh, and today is 7-Eleven, so you might still, I don't know if they're still doing it, but um, sometimes they give away um, Slurpees, I think, at 7-Eleven today. So thanks for joining me, and I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and evening, and I'll see you very shortly. Bye!